Multi-Limpet controllers were introduced in Elite Dangerous Odyssey Update 9, and represent a long-requested attempt at improving the overall usability of Limpet controllers. While commendable, there are significant drawbacks to using a Multi-Limpet controller, and there are important trade-offs to consider when planning a build. First-time users should note that installing any of these modules will erase your ship's fire groups presets. I'm not sure if this is a bug, but it happens every time you install a new multi-controller. Limpet controllers in Elite Dangerous are only available in odd-numbered module sizes. Multi-Limpet controllers are even more restrictive than their regular counterparts, being available only in size 3 and size 7 which means that ships lacking these module sizes will be poorly suited to deploy these modules, as they will outright lack the required space, or be forced to undersize a larger optional internal. Ships like the Alliance Chieftain, Anaconda, Cobra Mark III, Federal Gunship, Fertilance, Sidewinder, and Vulture will struggle to apply size 3 multi-limpet controllers. Ships like the Beluga Liner, Asp Explorer, Diamondback Scout, Crate Phantom, and Viper Mark III have plentiful size 3 modules ready and waiting. There are five different controllers, with two grades each, for a total of ten new modules that can be equipped. Two of these are size 7, with the rest available only in size 3. The size 3 multi-limpet controller can run up to four limpets, more than typical for the size in a specialized limpet controller. The size 7 controller can run up to 8 limpets simultaneously, again, more than its specialized counterparts. Multi-limpet controllers are being run as a test right now, so no engineering blueprints are available, and only one multi-controller can be installed per ship. These restrictions may be lifted once the final balance of these modules is determined. You should consider multi-limpets a soft beta, and be prepared for their stats and functionality to change going forward. Stat screens for these modules are confusing, and make the controllers look like their limpets will behave differently than if they were launched from their dedicated counterparts. This is not the case. Ignore the stat screen on the multi-limpet controllers. Limpets fired from a multi-controller will behave the same as if they were fired from a dedicated limpet controller of the same size and grade. At the time of writing, these modules and their abilities are divided as follows. The mining multi-limpet controller can carry out the functions of a prospector and a collector. From a gameplay perspective, you only need a 1A rated prospector limpet to effectively mine, with controllers firing more prospectors, allowing you to sweep multiple rocks in the vicinity for resources. The A rating is important here because the prospector module grade determines how many fragments are released during mining operations. Since the mining multi-controller is limited to a maximum C grade, it will perform significantly worse at generating mining fragments compared to a dedicated A-rated prospector controller. Additionally, prospector limpets and collector limpets handle their lifespans much differently than each other. Prospectors have indefinite operational lives, while collectors expire after a set period of time. Currently, if you deploy a full set of collectors and then attempt to deploy a prospector, nothing will happen. No warning, no indicator, just squib and silence. The only way to correct this is to turn off the mining controller, or wipe your limpets off on the nearest asteroid. Avoiding this requires constant and careful attention, and in practice, it prevents grouping this module with other collectors, lest you find yourself unable to deploy a prospector when needed. These factors combined make the mining multi-controller a poor choice for miners compared to the dedicated alternatives, especially since the most you will save is one optional slot. Best to leave your current mining builds alone, and give this multi-controller a hard pass until things change. The Operations Multi-Limpet Controller carries out the functions of a collector, hatchbreaker, and recon. For those who may be unaware, ship salvage and piracy in Elite Dangerous have been unpopular for several reasons, one of which was the sheer amount of module space that was required in order to interact with all the different limpet ports available. Some performance is lost in hack and hatch breaking times, but you eliminate the need for three dedicated limpet controllers, depending on the commander's personal tastes. Some min-max builds may find this arrangement unfavorable 
But most commanders, myself included, are more than happy to take the L if it means freeing up more optional internals for ships in this role. Eliminating three controllers means more room for shield or hull improvements, FSD boosters, and other modifications that increase the utility and power of the ship overall. At the time of writing, I'm not aware of multi-limpet controllers being part of the NPC build pool. If they ever get added, we'll see NPC pirates gain more hull, cargo, and shield capability. Granted, none of this resolves the payout problem, since salvage and piracy around superships has some of the lowest average credit per hour yields in the game. It's fun, but ultimately not the best way to earn credits if that's your intention. All things considered, this multi-controller is useful if you don't mind the extended hack and hatch-breaking times, though its usefulness is rendered mostly moot by the aforementioned mechanical and economical problems surrounding piracy and salvage. The Rescue Multi-Limpet Controller carries out the functions of fuel transfer, hatch breaker, and repair controllers. Explorers have been asking for something like this for a long time, and it's a good idea, until you realize how heavy this thing is. Eight tons on a small ship is enough to knock a few light years off a vessel's jump range, a hard deal breaker for many explorers, who will likely favor their current setups with dedicated limpet controllers. To be fair, Pairing these functions together means one small ship can act as both hull seal and fuel rat, and it provides a ton of flexibility where there has previously been none. I've elected to install this on my Beluga liner, since its massive FSD doesn't feel the 8-ton module as much as the Anaconda or Crate wheel. Verdict-wise, this module is excellent in concept, but its excessive mass and lack of engineering mean explorers are trading light years for three limpet types they might not need or use unless they are active participants in a rescue group of some kind. It's a difficult trade-off to consider, and one that will hinder widespread adoption among explorers. The Xeno Multi-Limpet Controller can carry out the functions of decontamination and research controllers. The Xeno Limpet Controller is a solution seeking a problem that doesn't exist. Most ships conducting a research mission will remain in the area only long enough to collect their samples and then leave as quickly as possible. In most situations, during practical gameplay, research limpets are deployed from small ships, where any caustic damage is either avoided entirely by virtue of speed, or cooked off after successfully jumping away with samples in hand. The research limpet controller was originally created as part of a RAMTA initiative a while back. It was required to complete a mission for the engineer, and then basically forgotten about. Exploration ships occasionally fit research limpets since they can also scrape tissue samples from certain Lagrange cloud organisms. It's possible this module will get more functionality in the future, but right now, nobody in AXI uses a research limpet for combat situations. Since half the Xeno controller's functionality is irrelevant for Thargoid combat, you're better off running a dedicated decontamination limpet or dedicated repair limpet controller when fighting Thargoids. If the Xeno Limpet controller were to gain standard repair limpet functionality, in addition to the current functions, you'll see a lot more use in AXI. Until that happens, best to give this module a hard pass. The Universal Limpet controller is where things get really interesting. Of all the modules, this is the most powerful and most sensible. One Limpet controller to rule them all and provide specific large ships with the ultimate supporting power they've been begging for for years. It's expensive, heavy, and draws a ton of power compared to most limpet controllers, but it grants an incredible amount of roll flexibility. It hosts eight limpets simultaneously, more than any single controller in the game. The Imperial Cutter will struggle with this particular module since it's a size 7, and the Cutter doesn't have any size 7 modules, forcing you to undersize one of its size 8s. The Federal Corvette, however, absolutely loves this module. It has plenty of power and engine headroom to support the weight, and can readily implement a universal controller into one of its three size 7 slots, granting it by far the most versatility befitting of its military-focused background. While I don't think the universal limpet controller is a meta-breaker on the scale of something like the Gauss Cannon, it does offer large pad ships a supporting power unavailable anywhere else in the game. 
giving them a unique value proposition that will likely facilitate the consolidation of builds in older players' accounts, while simultaneously reducing the need for newer players to build more specialized, task-specific vessels that were previously required to play the different roles in Elite Dangerous. It pushes large ships deeper into the heart of a wing, allowing them to act as the strong defensive center, while providing small and medium ships opportunity for field repair that was previously uncommon and difficult. Unfortunately, the multi-limpet controller does nothing for the practicality and feasibility of the limpets themselves. I remain of the opinion that the various limpet types need a rebalance. They need their underlying mechanics adjusted, before we can see them reach their full potential in the current ecosystem of features. Though, that topic will need to receive treatment in its own video sometime in the future.